Hey, what's going on guys? B Flodden here with a brand new video today, and today I am doing my first build video in Elden Ring ever. So I'm going to try my absolute best to showcase just what this uh, build can do and just how powerful it is. There are going to be a couple of clips in the intro. Uh, it will one-shot most casual and normal bosses. As for some bigger bosses, you'll probably be able to do it in a minute, maybe minute 10 tops. Uh, just some fun stats that I uh, did not include in the intro. I had a 10,000 damage hit on Fire Giant just for fun. I beat the Godskin duo here in about a minute and uh, a lot of other one-shot bosses on uh, most uh, common bosses and also uh, a few bosses such as like Godfrey, Morgoth, Margit, things like that. I'm testing this build in New Game Plus 1, so these are going to be a little bit different than a normal New Game journey, but you are able to hit these damage numbers in uh, New Game uh, num number 1, Journey 1. Um, this is loosely based on a Dragon Incantation one-shot build, but also just a more casual friendly. It's okay if you don't one-shot a boss. If you end up two, three, four shotting a boss, you're still chunking a boss pretty decently while still being able to comfortably play in your playstyle. Without further ado, let's go ahead and just get into the build from there. So I'm using dragon incantation spells like I mentioned. I'm using things like Dragon Maw. I'm using Exeek's Decay, Golden Vow as a buff, Hallow Shabriri as a buff, Agil's Flame, and Smarig's Glintstone Breath with a fun Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike on there just for shits and giggles too. There are a few other things that you can do with this build spell-wise. You can get uh, enough intelligence, if you will, to get things like Night Comet if you uh, prefer to throw on Lusats, if that's your uh, playstyle. But uh, ideally you just want to stick to the Dragon Incantations because that's what we're going to be primarily focusing on boss-wise. Now. To go ahead and look at what dragon incantations are, it is a very long cast time, so I decided to focus on that a little bit more, rather than the pure raw damage that it can output, and risk taking a hit or two along the way. So in order to do that, uh, with um, our dragon communion seal, I uh, took its plus 10 with a S plus in uh, arcane, sorry, just regular S, and uh, I'm using a... Radagon Icon, which is not uh, generally recommended on the build. However, the Radagon Icon uh, says that it's shortened spell casting time, but it also works on incantations as well. It basically gives you a 30 floating dexterity with a uh, with it just being stored into um, spell speed. So. Um, for example, I had a 6.5 second casting time for most of my normal dragon incantations. With the Radigan Icon, I was able to shave it down to about a 5 second cast, which a second and a half can be life saving. I also like to put a little bit more into dexterity as I'm actually leveling that up right now. I have a 29 dex. The spell time or spell casting speed will max out at 70 dexterity. So if you have the Radigan Icon on, you only need 40 dexterity because of that floating 30. It will make it so it has a 70 um, because of that floating uh, 30 dexterity that it has. I'm using the Roar Medallion. The Roar Medallion enhances your roars and breath attacks. I believe it's 15% damage for roars and 10% for uh, breath. Uh, the breath uh, is going to be going to be our things like Hagios Flame and. Uh, Zeke's Decay, all of our uh, weapon breath, if you're a D&D &D fan, is uh, where that damage is going to be coming from. Uh, I like Phlox Canvas Talisman, greatly raises potency of incantations. This thing is not easy to obtain, it involves uh, the finale of Millicent's questline. Not a fun talisman to get, however, it is powerful enough to warrant being thrown on the build. And Talisman number four could just be a combination of whatever you personally like. If you want to do Dragon Crest uh, Great Shield Talisman, this is a 20% physical damage buff. It is quite nice if you want to be a little bit more tanky in the fight. 
Things like the Drake Talismans, depending on which boss you're fighting, those could be pretty decent too. They are quite helpful. Um, there are a lot of Scorpion Charms as well that work on this build quite well. Magic Scorpion Charm, Fire Scorpion Charm for the Glenstone or Agile's Flame. Uh, with the... Uh, where are you... Uh, Ritual Sword Talisman as well is also decent if you're good at rolls and not getting hit, or if you just want to go for a really powerful early uh, attack. Raises attack power when your HP is maximum. This is a 10% boost. Uh, Blue Dancer Charm is something that's been talked about a lot, but this only works if your equipment load is under 40, and it's mostly ideal between 20 and 30 in order to maximize the damage boost. So I actually don't use the Blue Dancer Charm because of that reason. I'm using dual katanas, I'm using an armor set, I'm using a uh, couple of talismans, of course, four of them, and uh, the dragon communion seal. That's a little bit too much weight to warrant using the blue dancer charm to its maximum potential. Uh, that's really about all that I would recommend for it. Shard of Alexander is decent too. It uh, greatly boosts the attack power of skills. This is going to be for uh, weapon of choice when you're not using your uh, dragon incantations, say for adds or something like that. Um, Moon of Noxtella, also doable if you want to throw on more dragon incantations, you get more memory slots, but memory stones do the same thing. Um, talking about the armor set, Scaled Greaves, Veteran's Gauntlets, Drake Knight Armor, Skeletal Mask, you get a poise of 51, which is a breakpoint. And uh, a break point meaning that 51 will give you that extra point before your poise is broken or your stance is broken so that you're able to continue on. If you want to use things like the arsenal charm and a little bit heavier, uh, you can. It's a uh, decent uh, option too if you want to take this to a more casual approach. Uh, remember though, with every single thing that you remove on damage wise and uh, put it into more like, say, uh, tankiness or just general all round, your one shot potential is going to lower down a little bit more. So if you're okay with that, then absolutely do something like that. Uh, for your weapons and hands, you can do uh, katanas, uh, bandage blood uh, curved sword, scavenger's blood curved sword, dual either of them, not bad. Um, I'm also a huge advocate of the desk poker. Desk poker is a lot of fun. I was using that for a bit. Uh, Death Poker, if I can find it, is a Frostbite-styled uh, weapon, and it also lets you send out a Frost uh, spell forward to do uh, quite a bit of damage. I can't find it for some reason, but uh, it is a good weapon. Uh, frost debuff is 20%, and um, whenever the Frost hits, they take 20% more damage for 30 seconds. So that is a good debuff to have, especially if they're weak to Frost. Um, which is something that I would recommend, just checking what the boss's weakness is. It's uh, quite good. Um, Flask of Wondrous Physic, I'm using Fate Not, Faith Not Crystal Tier and Magic Shrouding Crack Tier for magic damage and boost of faith. It does help out quite a bit. Uh, stats that I would recommend, I'm a little bit higher level now because I'm on New Game Plus 1. But stats that I would recommend minimum, I would say 40 to 50 health. Uh, mind, you can do anywhere between 15 to 20. That's fine. You can get two good casts out of uh, a Dragon Breath attack. Endurance, just enough to be able to wear all of your gear. Uh, I'm at 30 right now just because I like a little bit of stamina. Strength, I have absolutely nothing. Uh, just enough to hold my swords. Uh, dexterity, this is your caster speed. I would recommend raising this up as much as you can as you take this into later playthroughs. However, I don't start off with a lot of dexterity. Intelligence, as low as possible. Faith, 33. That's Howl of Shabriri. Uh, minimum requirements, so I hit the minimum requirements for it. Uh, Arcane 80. Arcane 80 is going to give you huge amounts of your uh, blood loss scaling. The higher that it is, the better, and that's where it maxes out. So you want your Arcane to 80 to get the maximum potential of your uh, Blood Loss if you're choosing to do Blood Lost weapons. Uh, I have Seppuku on both these swords just so I can get extra damage with them if I'm using these. 
Uh, I rarely use my swords, honestly. Usually the um, breath attacks are good enough as is. Uh, just to talk about a little bit more stats uh, and fun nerdy stuff. The buffs that we're using are Golden Vow, like I mentioned earlier. This is just Incantation Heaven, 15% damage. And Howl Shariri is a 40% damage buff for a uh, 40 second time frame. You could also do Commander Standard if you want. However, Commander Standard and Howl Shabriri do not go together because they are both body buffs. You can't stack the same buff that does the same thing that is considered like two aura, two body, things like that. Uh, Golden Vow and Howl Shabriri work together very well. Commander Standard also works pretty well with uh, Golden Vow. Uh, Commander Standard is basically a safer version of Howl Shabriri. You get a 20% damage uh, buff and also a 20% um, uh, defense buff. So you get a little bit more tanky with that, like a Dragon Quest Talisman in a ability. Either is uh, quite good. Uh, the setup that I usually do before fighting and uh, attempting to one-shot a boss is checking what the boss is uh, to see what it's weak against. Say, for example, it's weak against uh, Glintstone Breath. Cool. What I would want to do is I would want to have a Magic Scorpion Charm equipped in my fourth Talisman slot, along with our three normal ones. Uh, I take my Flask first, put on my Dragon Communion Seal, and then I Golden Vow. And then we switch to Hallow Shabriri. Toss down a Flask of Cerulean Tear, set up Glintstone Breath. And to get that second cast animation there, uh, I don't see a lot of people talking about it, but you just hold the attack button in order to uh, cast it a second time. If you're able to and your poise isn't broken, your stance isn't broken, you're able to get that second cast off. Uh, that's why you want to have a, just enough mind to be able to hit that second cast be able to do it. 15 will get you there just fine, but anything more is just icing on the cake. Cost down to Cerulean Tears. And you get to uh, go Wonders from there. All of these weapon breaths are really, really good. Um, Flintstone Breath is magic damage, of course. Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike is lightning. Uh, Dragon Maw is a physical attack. Exeek's Decay is physical with Scarlet Rot. And Agil's Flame is Fire, so that's what all of those uh, scale and damage into, just so that you can set up your build properly around whichever one you're using to maximize your damage. I think I've covered pretty much everything uh, stat-wise and uh, all things that are fun. Uh, feel free to check the clips if you uh, want to refer to some of the damages that it can do. But I might as well find an enemy just along the way, just to uh, have a little bit of fun, you know? Let's go ahead and just full send a uh, normal enemy just to show you what it can do. While I also have an opportunity, I uh, highly recommend checking out my uh, Twitch channel as well. I'm going to be playing Shadow of the Air Tree on launch. I'm going to be playing it all throughout the weekend along with videos and all that fun stuff as well. Go ahead and just take our uh, buffs. Alchemy. Take a Glintstone Breath just for fun. And there's an unsuspecting enemy right here. Let's go ahead and pull him over here. He's going to get mad at us. I just don't want to pull the enemy along the left hand side just to be able to hit him. And that's the unfortunate part, is when he breaks your poise. This is where I would recommend having a little bit more poise. I uh, did not um, plan for that as uh, well as I would like to. But you can still see that the damage is hitting pretty hard here. There's 2,460 damage. He had his shield up, it looked like, too. So we were able to full send him pretty decently. Uh, like I mentioned, I was able to do up to 10,000 damage to a uh, fire giant, uh, which was actually really funny. Can't say I've seen those numbers before. Quite uh, happy about that. I'm gonna get knocked down again. That's okay. There's 2,000 damage there for a half cast. Not too shabby. 
Normally for these adds, I would use like my katanas. I don't really care about wasting time with my dragon breath attacks. But uh, if there's a tough enemy in your way, you can always full send them and uh, send them to the Shadow Realm too. Uh, feel free to have fun with this build, test it out, play around with some of the things that I mentioned, make it your own. It's a lot of fun and uh, it covers just about everything that the uh, DLC could possibly throw at us. We have every type of damage that we could uh, possibly imagine and want. Feel free to uh, check out some of my other guides and videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. My name is B. Flattened. I'm signing on out of here. Take care, all. Laters.